Welcome to Episode 7 of Renewed and Redeemed, where we share stories on how God has renewed and redeemed everyday people's lives. On today's episode, you will hear Tasha share how God taught her the key to not being gripped by anxiety, as her job, home, health, and transportation all were disrupted and changing at the same time. She learned to live in His peace and protection, and trust Him in new ways. We hope this episode blesses you. Not even 10 minutes later, I get the worst phone call a parent could ever experience. It's a FaceTime call, and she's hysterically crying, like, Mom, I'm sorry, your car. And I'm like, my car? What happens to my car? She's like, I got into an accident, but your car. And I'm like, girl, I don't care about my car. <laughs> Welcome to Renewed and Redeemed. Today on episode seven, we're going to talk to Tasha, who is a married mother of two teenagers. She has beat cancer twice, and she's now dealing with lupus. All of this while still working full time, but also facing some work issues. And if that wasn't enough, she's also decided to, in the midst of all this, build a house. So I'm super blessed to have you here today, Tasha, and I can't wait to hear how God is working in your life. Welcome. Thank you. Excited to be here. Can't wait to share where I currently am in life right now. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to hear it. So just to get a little, you know, icebreaker to get started, I was just wondering if your life was a book, what chapter would you be in right now? Yeah, so I feel like where I am right now, it would be a chapter titled as if God was speaking to me and say, do you trust me now? I feel like that would be the perfect title to everything that's going on right now. Well, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. So obviously we know that you have a lot going on. If you could just walk through that a little bit and explain everything that's going on and and share with us about that. Yeah. So right now I am officially resigned from my job that I had been with for about four and a half years, big name company. And I was one of the managers there for the staffing team. So I was very, very busy, constantly in a high stress environment, constant anxiety, but I loved what I did. I I came to a point in that tenure where I had new management come in and I guess my demeanor and my spiritual side kind of challenged them. And so it kind of put a target on my back to where they essentially, they wanted me out the door just because I challenged them as a manager And just, I guess I made them uncomfortable just because I was very, you know, righteous in my workplace. And I always wanted to make sure that people were cared for and loved for. And he was the opposite. He didn't care for people. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we had a very strained relationship, which I started to feel prompted in my spirit that it was time to go and not just out of the department, but time to go out of the company. And so the company had pretty much had me set for life. I was very, very comfortable there financially. Even if something were to happen to me where I'm no longer here, my family would have been extremely taken care of. And so I was really hanging on to that, you know, despite all the unhealthiness that was going on in the company, despite having to be logged in at one, two o'clock in the morning and not having much of a work-life balance, I was hanging on to that comfortability and that safety net. And so it got to the point where my physical health was, I'm already, you know, dealing with a lot of physical health issues, but it was impacted more where I was not able to concentrate just because I had so many flare-ups in a week and just so much pain. And there was just a lot going on physically that I wasn't able to fully focus on work. And so I I started to, you know, you know, put it in God's hands and say, all right, you know, I, I know that it's time to go. And I know that I have to do something. And so I started to get into a place of consecration and just isolating myself and making sure that everything that I was listening to, reading, doing, saying was edifying my spirit and edifying God. Uh, I started applying to to places and uh, it was funny because I kept getting declines, rejections, and just, and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do here? Like, I know that my work experience, especially with this company on my resume, I should be getting callbacks and it wasn't happening. And I was like, okay, you know, this was probably back in like November. And I'm like, all right, God, I will keep applying and I'll keep focused on what I'm doing here and still act accordingly because I still have to be reasonable at work. And so in in the midst of all of that, my husband and I decided it's time to move from where we are 
My son is 14 and is about six foot two and doesn't really fit in his bedroom (laughs) right now. You know, I opened the door and I hit his feet when I opened the door from him hanging off of his bed. He's just really a tall kid for his room. So we decided to look for another house. The house market right now is terrible. It's really hard to find a house. And so we decided to build and, and building a house is something that I've dreamt of for years. And so we we decided to do it. And fast forward to March, that's when we signed everything for the building of the house. I already was starting to feel super, super anxious about my job security when we signed for this house, but I had that nudge in my spirit to be okay with it. Just go for it. And we signed on it. We signed on the house and we, we waited for the permits to start being approved. And so in the midst of the permits being approved, two months had passed and more work issues just started pressing, 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 ultimately leading up to me taking a short-term disability just because I couldn't take it anymore. Right. I felt like during that time, I had an opportunity to really get on my face and really, you know, no excuse. I'm home. I can do nothing but talk to God and be in his presence and, and read and do what I need to do. I've never encountered God in the way that I did during those few months where I felt so much peace that I've never felt in my entire life ever. So during that time, I was feeling such a nonchalant peace where it almost felt like if you came to me and told me you're about to get kicked out of your house, my response would have been, okay. We'll figure it out, you know, as opposed to my normal controlling anxiety ridden self. Yeah. Because I can be, I know that I can be very controlling and I want to make sure that I have a plan A, B, C, and D in place just in case. That's just my personality. And I had this overwhelming sense of peace just come over me. Like you're about to lose your job and you just decided to build on a house. And I felt okay. Even my husband looked at me. He's like, okay, where's my wife? (laughs) It's the piece that passes understanding, right? Yeah, exactly. And he, it was something different for him to see because I am that type of person that wants answers and plans and everything. I felt super content with that. And so deciding to take the short-term disability gave me an opportunity to really do an aggressive job pun. So I started putting in more applications and interviews started coming, responses started coming. And in the middle of all that, my daughter got into a car wreck. Oh no. Um, she got into a car wreck with my car. And that morning she, she was dog sitting for that week. And she comes into my room that morning. She's like, mom, I have to go and let the dog out and I need gas in my car. So I told her, Hey, just take my car and just go and come back real quick. Not even 10 minutes later, I get the worst phone call a parent could ever experience. It's a FaceTime call and she's hysterically crying like, mom, I'm sorry, your car. And I'm like, my car, what happens to my car? She's like, I got into an accident but your car. And I'm like, girl, I don't care about my car. (laughs) I care about you. Yeah. Like, are you okay? Are you hurt? You know, where are you? And so we rushed to the scene, cars totaled, but she walks away with just a couple scratches. It amazed me. Yeah. It amazed me to see how much more worse that could have been. Yeah. And she walks away with just airbag burns. And even in that, I'm like, God, only you can sustain me right now because I would have lost my mind. Yeah. Even with, you know, her walking away this way, but I have no car now. My car is totaled and I'm here. I am worrying about the back end stuff. My debt to income ratio can't change if I get a new car because I'm getting a new house. Like, right. <laughs> you know, thinking of all those things. And I'm just like, you know what? No, my baby's here. She's fine. Everything else will fall into place. And now I have, you know, about three or four job offers that have offered me employment. And so now I'm needing to decide which one I want to take instead of stressing about not having any job offers coming through. Right. Wow. That is a lot. And during all this, your health wasn't the best through it? No, it wasn't. You know, that when I got on that, when I took that short-term disability, I instantly felt a difference with my body just not having to wake up in the morning and immediately stress, have those anxiety flares because I have to go into the office and deal with whatever's coming my way. Waking up in the morning and not having that, it was like, wow, this is what it actually feels like not to have any kind of flare-ups, you know? So my 
my health has drastically changed. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, but it sounds like, you know, God is really working in each and every uh, circumstance, you know, and that's so amazing to hear and also I'm sure see just how he's working in your life and in your family's life and what a testimony. Yeah. You know, I've never, I've never had to test my faith before and I've never had to seek a place of peace the way that I have had to in the past couple months. Looking at everything that I have going on right now, new house, I just had to get a new car and now a new job. It took somebody to tell me that, to realize that's what was going on. And I had to take a step back and just like, okay, this is why there's such a struggle. There's so much newness going on. And you know, what's crazy is that I kept dreaming last year with being pregnant and having a little boy. And I'm like, I don't, I can't have kids. <laughs> so why do I keep dreaming with being pregnant and having little boys? It, it, like taking a seat back and looking at everything, it, it makes sense now. now. Yeah. God's birthing new things in you. And I love that you just can have that peace that he gives in the midst of all this without even really knowing what all the outcome is going to be. You yeah, know, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. at the end of it and like saying, praise God, he did this, this, and this, and I have this job and it's amazing. You don't have that yet. I mean, you see that in your scope. But yeah, it's not yeah. actually here yet. But even in the midst of that, you still have that peace. And I believe just from knowing you that you're still praising him in the midst of that too. And that's that's so good. And that just shows the depth of faith that we can have in him and his goodness and his faithfulness to us. Yeah, for sure. I look at what where I will be, you know, at the end of the year when the house is done. And I know that I'll be fine. You know, I like right now we're selling our current house and I'm like, calculating, oh, we need to have this, that, and the third. And now my husband's the ones like that has the mindset of it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And so that kind of adds on to my piece. And I'm like, you're right. It is going to be fine. And I, I don't stress about it. So when you do feel the stress or the maybe doubt or worry start to creep in, how do you deal with that? How do you get yourself turned around? Well, it's kind of hard for people to recognize that they have that doubt and worry and already. But once I start to feel that anxiety, I, I immediately reroute my thoughts because I get into a wormhole of worry and anxiety and start thinking about the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. I think about a preaching that happened a couple months ago in our church, and it was titled Hurry Sickness, which is a real thing that I didn't even know. He talked about how hurry sickness is an urgency that steals what's important. And it's a mixture of anxiety and feeling the feeling of urgency, high stress, dealing with quality of work and tiredness, and it's a distraction. And so I, I start to immediately remember that preaching. And he talked about Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where it says, come to me, all who are weary, and I'll give you rest. And it's not just a reminder of saying, okay, God, I'm going to cast all my anxieties to you, but it's like, okay, I need to rest, but not just like lay down and sleep. Right. I need to rest. I need to shut off all distractions. If my leg is still shaking when I'm sitting here, then something's still worrying me. And I need to get to a place where I'm not thinking about all the things that could go wrong, but I'm thinking about all the things that he's already brought me through. And that kind of heightens the trust again and knowing he's got my back in this situation regardless. And, and we really see that throughout, especially the, the Old Testament, when the Israelites were going against a big battle, they recalled all the things that God had already done for them. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. so important for us to do the same. I have a journal where I just write down like different things that he's done for me, nothing else. It's just things he's done for me so that when I'm struggling, I can go back and be like, no, he's already done all of this. Why are you worried <laughs> about this? Obviously, I think you've already shared some lessons, but did you have anything else that you feel like is a lesson that you've learned through either this situation or some other part of your life that you could share with everyone and kind of help people out? Yeah. There's a lot of people that I know that deal with anxiety and depression. My daughter's one of them. She deals with anxiety and things will start to affect her very, very quickly. And it's kind of hard to speak to somebody who has anxiety. If you haven't experienced it yourself, it's hard for someone to speak to it. And so I feel like I am able to help people pinpoint what it is that triggered it and help them to get to, to think differently. It's battlefield of the mind. There's a book about it. It's one thing that we can control, but it's also the one thing that can get us in trouble. And so I want to make sure that people know the outcome of stuff is your decision because we have that freedom. But if you are 
feeding yourself the right things and you're rerouting yourself and trusting in the right things and having faith, your outcome can be totally different as, as if you were the one that had the control of, the, of everything. Right. So I would definitely encourage those that deal with anxiety or worry to make sure that they're replacing those things with scripture and just speaking that over their, over their life. Cause I really, really wholeheartedly believe that speaking scripture over yourself really changes the dynamic of your atmosphere and your thoughts and your environment, everything. Yes. Yes. And you said that even at the beginning of all this, that was one of the first things that you did really was changing what you were letting feed into your life, what you were eating on and what was coming in. And I, I think that keeping that gate is so important. And I think that in the uh, show notes, we'll list some verses that people can speak and pray over themselves for yeah. things like that. So listeners, just look in the show notes if you need some suggestions of verses to pray over yourself in situations that you're dealing with anxiety. Mm-hmm, for sure. You know, and there's one specifically that got me through a lot of the things and I, I would have to look it up to get the actual where to find it exactly in Psalms. But it's the one that talks about hiding me in the shadow of your your wings and delivering me from my my enemies. Just even thinking about that, hiding me under the shadow of his wings, like just the shadow, not even specifically under his arm or anything. Wow, that's protection enough. And that that alone as well gets me through a lot of a lot of things that I start to allow, <laughs> should I say, or even the things that the enemy tries to throw my way. That's something that I constantly remind myself of. Yeah, we'll look that verse up and put it in there. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? The time of me figuring out what I wanted to do next with work, my prayers started to become very self-absorbed. I mean, I immediately recognized that, and I did not want that to be the case every time I came to God with my situation or with anything. And so I began to change my prayers um, because there were other people in my life that were dealing with the same situation with needing work, but their situations were worse. So I completely changed my prayer in my alone time with making sure that they were blessed. My sister-in-law and my brother were blessed with work, good jobs that they could completely rely on before I was even considered for anything. And I felt like that adjustment really gave me a sense of even more peace. I began to see those things flourish in their lives before I could even receive anything. And I, 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 felt selfless in doing that because my prayers did feel super selfish and I wanted to change that. Wow. Yeah, that's so good. And I've heard that before. Like if if you're waiting or you're, you're wanting something to really sow into somebody else's life for the same type of thing and to not just focus on yourself. It's, it's awesome that you did that. And I know that they did get the jobs and stuff that they were looking for. And now so have you. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely needed. Awesome. All right. Well, do you have anything else? No, I mean, just encouragement to exercise what faith really means because it's it's faith the size of a mustard seed and it's really, really tiny. But what else can you do besides have that faith of a mustard seed? It's not just having the faith, it's exercising it. And it's purposely saying, God, I trust you. God, I relinquish control. God, I'm letting it go. And the moment you try to think about worrying it, do you worry about it? Or do you actually say, Oh, I forgot. I gave it to you already. I'm not going to worry about it because it's, it's an exercise. It's something that we has to, have to constantly remind ourselves of because we're human. And there are times that I sit here and I start to worry about the house things. I'm like, whoa, I gave that to you already. I have no right to worry about it because I know you've got my back. Right. Um, and so having that mindset and that strength to just say, you got it and I'm not going to worry about it. That's so, 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 so important. I agree. I agree. Well, would you um, close us out in prayer and maybe pray over people that are dealing with anxiety or job situations or housing situations or car situations? Yeah, (laughs) for sure. Of course. God, I thank you for giving me the platform and opportunity to speak of your goodness. God, I thank you for the many, many times that you have shown up in my life from big to small. Uh, Father, I pray over those listening right now that you show up and you show them that you are there regardless of their doubt. Father, I pray that you show up and show out in housing situations, that you show up and show out in job situations, that you give them more than they are expecting in any kind of job offer and in a peaceful work environment, Father, and a healthy work uh, work environment. Father, I pray for those that are dealing with car situations, God, that you bless them abundantly and that you bless them beyond their expectation. 
Father, I pray that anxiety is casted off of those listening, Father, right, right now that they're dealing with any kind of fear, worry, or doubt, that you give them that blanket of peace, God, that you cover their entire household, Father, right now with that peace so that they no longer feel like they have no end. Father, I pray that you are their end, and I pray that their lives and their words are filled with faith and that they have nothing but confidence in you. Father, I pray for consecration on those listening and that they are able to solidify themselves and that they're able to gain that solitude in you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and please consider subscribing to our podcast and sharing it with your friends. For more information on Renewed and Redeemed and to check out our Bible study, blog, and shop, please visit us at renew-redeemed.com. We'd love to hear from you if you need prayer, have a question, would like to share a testimony, or give your life to Jesus. Today you heard Tasha's story and how she went from finding her security in her job to finding security and a deep peace in God. She stepped out in faith and took a leave from work and pursued her dream of building a house. She found grace and hope in quiet times with God while praying and holding on to God's promises found in Scripture. She discovered a key to ridding anxiety by focusing on the goodness of God. If you or someone you love is struggling with anxiety or going through a difficult time, then don't forget to head over to the show notes and get the document that has scripture that you can pray to strengthen your faith.